Hey, folks, and welcome back to Glenn and Adrian's Rock Talk. That's Adrian. And that's Glenn. And today we're going back to Rush and we're going back to Clockwork Angels. We're actually going to uh, build a string of songs that we can build into a playlist of its own sometime, or at least put it that way in sequence in our official Rush Reactions playlist. This is called Seven Cities of Gold. It comes right after Halo Effect, which we covered, uh, I think, last week when you see this. And then also uh, The Wreckers on the other side, which we've also covered. And The Wreckers is followed by Headlong Flight, which we've also covered. Mm-hmm. Those are all the songs except for uh, we also did The Garden. Mm-hmm. So we have gone back to this record a lot. There's a reason for it. We think this is a really great album from Rush. You know, Even coming late in their career, it's one of their best albums. And it seems a lot of younger listeners that stumble on Rush feel that way as well. I, I see that opinion a lot. Like, oh, Clockwork Angels is their best album. You know, I'm not here to debate that. I'm just here to say it's a great album. And uh, it's, worth, it's worth more attention than it's getting, although it has gotten some, and that's good. They were great right through to the end. We want to make sure people know that this album is worth their time. So, Adrian, do you know if you've heard this song before? I don't think I have. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and take a look at it. This comes off the Clockwork Angels DVD, I believe.
cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I've got just a couple things to say about that. Is uh, I really liked Alex's guitar solo in this one. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. And, I feel uh, like most of his solos are works of art. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's one too. So. Yeah, he's, he's really incredible on the guitar. Oh, it's amazing. Also, the way Getty sang on this one, it really reminded me of Headlong Flight, to tell you the truth. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the same type of singing going on. He's hitting the high notes and, you know, mm -hmm. he's uh, you know, hitting the notes, really. I mean, the notes are, uh, things are pretty good, so. I agree, yeah. He's got pretty consistent vocals across this record. Yeah. Uh, you know, from song to song, they're they're pretty much the same, which is good. I like the style he's using too. It's not much different yeah. than he used to. He's not reaching for those super high notes anymore. I mean, yeah, he, he's still getting some notes in, some pretty good notes. <laughs> getting some high ones, but he's probably a half octave down from when he was, you know, at his peak in the seventies. Oh yeah, and who can blame yeah, him? Who cares? He was way up there in the seventies. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like up, up where only dogs could hear. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I I like Getty's vocals. I know not everybody <laughs> likes likes his vocals, but um, I I'm a fan. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, so all right. Well, I think we should look at some of the lyrics to this and kind of put it in context. Above the lyric sheet, Neil says, The legend had passed down for generations, far across the western sea where the steamliners could not fly. This is a steampunk-based album, by the way. So when they say steamliners, these are things that sometimes would fly around. And lay a wilderness land hiding seven cities of gold. I dared the crossing on one of the stout ships that followed the trade route to Poseidon, a tough port city. I worked there for a while on the steamliners that served the alchemy mines, then eventually set out into the Red Rock Desert. The stones were sculpted into unearthly monuments, and the country grew cold as I traveled north in search of the most famous city of gold, Kabula. Uh, its, its name had sounded in my dreams since childhood. And some of the lyrics... A man can lose his past in a country like this, wandering aimless, parched and nameless. A man could lose his way in a country like this, canyons and cactus, endless and trackless. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a sense of when Neil was on his motorcycle trip when he writes like that. Searching through a grim eternity sculptured by a prehistoric sea. Seven cities of gold, stories that fired my imagination, a splendid mirage in this desolation, glowing in my dreams like hallucinations, Glitter in the sun like a revelation, distant as a comet or a constellation. So, mm, wow. Again, Neil showing off himself to be an incredible wordsmith. Yes. <laughs> pulling together the elements that are needed for the song, nothing more, nothing less, and, uh, and presenting them in such an ordered and beautiful way, really. I never want to lose sight of Neil's writing within all of this amazing music that Rush made. Right. Yeah. So, it's right up there. It's such quality that uh, it's, it is. it's amazing that the guy was also one of the best drummers to ever hit the rock scene. Okay, well, so well, he was two gods: the drum god and the lyric god. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Alex and Getty hit the jackpot when they found this guy. And, oh yeah, <laughs> and you know, we're all very thankful that they that they all met and worked together and did it for so long. All right, folks, so if you have other suggestions for us for Rush, please leave those below. You can take a look at our playlist, Our Rush Reactions, to see if we've already done a particular song. And if not, please leave it below. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you enjoy our presentation, please subscribe. All right, and we'll keep them coming. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next one, all right? Take care, folks. See you all later.